what's up guys and welcome back to another Code Haven video. In today's video we're going to be learning all about how bubble sort works, some advantages of it and some disadvantages of it, and at the end we're going to do a simple implementation inside Visual Studio for you guys to take home with you. And now as always if you are not subscribed go ahead and right here right right down there somewhere or if you're on mobile just you know scroll down a little bit and hit that subscribe um, button for me because we are growing like crazy and I'm very happy to have you along with the ride. So now that that business is out of the way, let's get right into the video. All right, guys, so here we are, and I'm going to start by just giving a basic concept overview of what Bubble Sword is. So imagine that we have a group of students like this, you know, um, and they're varying heights and sizes, right? Now, let's say an external party comes along, such as a teacher, and, you know, the teacher wants to organize these students into, you know, a group from the... Uh, shortest people to the tallest people so as you see here um, they're just all mixed up and you know it needs to be sorted into you know this proper group of people and you know just as a teacher would do it to a class in real life um, that's what bubble sort is going to do to our arrays in our programs and you'll see here that after the teacher has left the uh, group is sorted uh, perfectly and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today when we're talking about bubble sort. So just think of bubble sort as, you know, we have this unsorted pile of something. You know, it could be numbers or, or words or, you know, people in this case. And, and someone is going to come along, look at each student individually and, you know, compare one student to the other or, you know, this number to the other number. And we're going to just sort it accordingly to, uh, you know, the best way that we think is possible. So now that we have a conceptual understanding of what's going on here, let's move on to a real uh, real world scenario. So let's say we have an array of numbers. And as you see here, it's unsorted. Um, but we want to sort it, right? We want to sort it so that it's easy to find stuff and it's more efficient. So we're going to sort it. And we're going to use bubble sort. So what we start out here, and you first want to compare the two numbers. The way the program works is it's going to compare 2 and 8. And it's going to determine which one is greater or, or less than the other. So in this can, in this scenario, we know that 2 is less than 8. Um, but the program needs to figure that out. So it's going to say, hey, is 2 less than 8? If so, it wants to leave it here. But if if eight's actually less than 2, they want to swap. Which, as we know, 8 is obviously not less than 2. It's greater than 2. So in this scenario, we're not going to make a swap at all. And we're going to move on to the next set of numbers. So now we're going to compare 8 and 5. 5 is less than 8. And 5 needs to be switched out with where 8 is. So we're going to go ahead and initiate the swap. And now we have 2, 5, and 8. And we've, we've gone through those, right? So now the next move for bubble sort is we're going to keep moving on to the array. Or we're going to keep moving down the, you know, down the line and keep trying to organize one by one. So now we have 8 and 1. Now 1 needs to be before 8, so once again we're going to initiate the swap. And then now we have 1 in front of 8, and that's all fine and dandy. <laughs> now we can move on to the next one in 8 and 14, and as we see here, 8 is less than 14. Now here's a critical juncture of the way that it's designed. Uh, we could stop here, but we're not sorted yet. We need to keep looping through the array until we have completely sorted everything out the way that needs to be. So with that being said, we're going to restart at the beginning. Now here we have 2 and 5. 2 is less than 5, so we're going to go ahead and move on. And we have 5 and 1. 1 needs to come before 5. So we go ahead and we initiate that swap. And then as you guys already know, and you're probably getting used to it, we're going to keep going down the line. 5 is less than 8, as we know, and 8 is less than 14. Now, once again, we need to restart. And you may be asking yourself, how does the program know to you know, restart it? How does it know that it's not done yet? And we're going to show you how that works in the implementation later in this video when we go ahead and look at the actual code itself. But with that being said, we want to go ahead and move on to uh, restarting the entire process over again. So now we have 1 and 2. 1 needs to be swapped out with 2, so we go ahead and do that. And then we have... 1 and 2 are in the perfect spot. Now, 
you'll notice that actually we've already sorted everything. Now one of the downsides is the program doesn't know that. It doesn't know that after it completed that swap just now, it's sorted completely. So it's going to finish out the loop and and it's actually going to have to loop through one more time to realize that it's already been completely sorted. So now that that's done, um, we'll loop through the rest of it and loop through the one last time and then the program will realize, hey, we are done here. We can go ahead and say that we're done and here we go. You have a nice, beautiful sorted array. So now that we've talked about kind of the process of how that works, let's talk some other things. Starting with the best case scenario. So the best case scenario with any sorting at all, and of course in this case, is if your array is already sorted. Obviously, um, it needs to come in here and realize that nothing needs to be done by looping through once, but still it's only going to be one loop instead of, as you saw earlier, it could be three loops or, or you know, as the data sets get bigger and bigger, it's going to be even more and more strenuous to keep you know, doing all those swaps until everything is in the right place. Now building off this, we're going to talk about a worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is actually going to be if it's reversely sorted. So that's going to really stink because you start at 14 and you know 13 is less than 14, so you need to swap. And then you're going to go on and, and 12 is less than 14, so you need to swap again and swap and swap and it's going to keep going on and that overall is way slower than than just the other scenario that we we've, we've seen up to this point. So obviously a worst case scenario would be a reverse sorted array. And after this, let's talk about some advantages. And uh, obviously it's great with smaller sets of data. And of course a lot of stuff's better with smaller sets of data. But you know that's the world we live in. And in this case, of course you would like to have a smaller set of data. And um, the other nice thing about it is simple to understand. It's very easy to set up, and it's a common, you know, beginner type uh, sorting style, if if you will. It's it's a beginner way of doing it. And of course, with everything, there's some disadvantages, and those are, uh, you know, it's it's worse with larger sets of data. And of course, a lot of things are worse <laughs> the the more data that they get, but. As you know, there are, are better and better ways to tackle bigger sets of data, and this unfortunately is just not one of them. And uh, also another another bad thing is that it takes an entire iteration to even realize that it's already been sorted. So of course that kind of stinks. All right, y'all, thanks for sticking around till this part of the video. Let's uh, let's just go ahead and do some bubble sorting. So um, to even sort, we of course need an array to sort. So let's just create one, and we're gonna do that by uh, creating an empty array. And call, you know, call it R, and then just fill it with some reverse order numbers, which, like I said earlier, is going to be the worst runtime for bubble sorting. So then we need a for loop, and this for loop is going to start at i, add zero, and then we're going to go all the way till the array's length minus one. And the reason we need to do minus one is because um, when we're comparing two numbers side by side, we don't want to go outside the boundaries of the array. So we want to make sure that for this first for loop, we want to stay within um, everything except the last index. So we have that. Then we're going to need another for loop. And inside this for loop, we're going to say j is equal to zero. So we want to start it at the beginning. We want to say that the uh, j is less than the array.length minus i minus 1. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, the array is you know five things long. We're going to subtract i. Let's say i is at 2. And then we're going to subtract 1 from that further. So the reason that we're doing this is because j is going to lag behind uh, i or, or vice versa. And, and they're, since they're, they want to always be next to each other. So that's the way that we do this, is we capture it like that. And then we're going to say J++. And then inside of here, we're going to need an if statement. And inside of this if statement, we're going to be comparing two numbers to see which one's bigger or which one's smaller. So in order to do that, we need to say the array at J, is it greater than the array at J plus 1? So if it is, if j is greater than the index 
after it, then what we want to do is swap. So to do the swap, we're first going to need a temp variable. So we're going to say in temp is equal to the array at j. So we capture that first thing that we need to swap here. And then after that, we're going to say the array at j is equal to the array at j plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and swap those. We're going to say that the array at uh, j plus 1 is equal to the temp variable that we created earlier. And that's just going to go ahead and say that the index after it is going to be, uh, basically we just took, we, we just swapped them. That's what we did. All right, guys, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just create one more for loop outside of everything um, just to check over the array to see if we've set our stuff up right. So we're just going to say that int i is equal to 0 and i is less than the array dot length and i plus plus and basically at every step we're going to say console dot right line and we're just going to print out the array at i to see to, just to see what happens while we're done here so let's go ahead and give it a run and you'll notice that as it's running it says one two three four five because it's already completed all the sorting and here we are we have a sorted array now as always if you like the video please go ahead and drop a comment down below give it a thumbs up and if you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel for more. Um, I'm trying to produce videos more and more often lately because the channel is growing like crazy. So thank you to you guys for everything that you've given me so far. So that. thank you everyone again. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.